Right, it's been a while since I uh, did a video that was pre-recorded. I think I said, um, where's my notes? Uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, Dick, Dick Coughlin, Brother Neuro, like, comment, subscribe, uh, Patreon, etc. And now, now what I need is a complete moron who says stupid shit that I can lose my temper over. Hey, here we go. Fantastic. That's more like it. Shall we crack on? Let's see what Dave Rubin has to say about stuff, shall we? It's like, is it, after all of this social justice stuff, is America more or less racist right now? Let's say in the last five years. I would say America probably is more racist. Right, okay. But Dave, but Dave, you said that you've been saying for ages that social justice people just... They just call you racist, you know. They, 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 you know, they call people racist not just as an insult. They're not actually racist. So if you're saying that that it's more racist now, doesn't that kind of mean that those accusations were actually true? And and even I mean I don't know. You can't. It's it's hard to quantify racism, really, isn't it? You know, you can't say, you can't have a unit of racism. I don't know how you would measure it. Um, but, yeah, aren't you kind of stepping on your point that, you know, the right and, you know, people on the right are, are not racist, you know? Because we weren't racist five years ago. We really... We, were, we weren't racist five years ago. Did you hear that, folks? We weren't racist five years ago. So, racism, that's become a bit of a problem recently in America. We weren't. And now they've hyper-racialized everything. So the lefties are all racists. They're just new school racists. We're, we're all racists. Okay. All the lefties are, are new school racists. Okay. Don't know what that is. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult, Dave, to take your, you know, your accusation that, you know, the left just calls people racist when you've literally just called everyone on the left racist. And I suspect they're breeding some racists on the right. You suspect that they're breeding some racists on the... They're breeding them. What, do, do, like, is that how it works? Is you get two racists and get them to breed like villagers in Minecraft? Is that it? You know, and is a question with this. This is the, this is the same old... We've all heard this before. That, you know, the, it's, always, it's always someone on the right blaming someone on the left for turning them racist, isn't it? It's never... It, and you never hear anyone on the left going, well, I used to be a right winger, but then the right was so mean to me that I changed my entire political philosophy and changed everything. And, and here's the thing, Dave. Has it, did it ever, let's say, for argument's sake, that there's something vaguely fucking valid in this notion that people on the left are making people on the right racist okay here's a question did it ever occur to you that that might work the other way round that maybe there are people on the you know there are people on the left you know it's, that that is perpetuating did it, is that ever why is it always why does the left have to take responsibility for your shitty opinions why can't you own the fucking opinion i mean it, do you believe that you're right do you believe that your right-wing opinions are correct? And if you do, own them. Just fucking own them. Otherwise, you know, people who otherwise would not have been racist, people who didn't look at everything through a racial lens, but, you know, who maybe are just white and regular people who just want to go about their lives, who are sick of being called the worst things in the world, so they start kind of becoming racist. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm. I'm just not having that, Dave. I'm not letting. No, I, I refuse to sit here and entertain the idea that someone could sit there. And plus, okay, let me ask you this. Let's say it wasn't people being accused of being racist all the time. Let's say you were accused of being a, a rapist or a paedophile. If someone did that, and let's say every day you woke up and no, and you were just unfairly accused by someone of being a rapist and a paedophile w would you would you suddenly just go oh fuck it i'm being I, i'm seeing as how i'm gonna get accused of being one i might as well just go out and be one what why is why do why do people sit there what kind of childish mentality 
What kind of immature, infantile idea is it that some people keep people keep calling me something that I'm not, so I'm just going to become that thing? And then in doing so, you have just... You do nothing but validate everything that they've just accused you of. Because I don't think you could just, accu you could just go out and be something that you're not, that, that was that, you know, universally agreed upon to be awful, unless it was already in you in the first place. They're looking at their watch, and a watch should be right twice a day, but they can't seem to ever get it right. A watch should be right twice. A watch, Dave, should be right once a day, which is all of it. I think you mean stopped watch. A stopped watch is right twice a day. You know, in your case, it's a it's a it's a fucking sundial in Iceland. Just imagine if this girl had enough power. The horrible things that she would do to people. Like I'm not uh, going to be the only one. Who okay, he's talking about Greta Thunberg. Here. Could see like little sort of. Uh, so, so what Dave does is admitting here is he spends his time during the day imagining and fantasizing the horrible things a seventeen-year-old girl could do to him. You can't even be gay properly, can you? You even get that wrong. It's it's amazing. You don't, you can't do anything right. It's statistically it's impossible. That someone could be this wrong about everything. Imagery of Hitler speaking up there, right? Like there was some th these people that think. That yes, she stood on a stage in front of people speaking. It's just like Hitler, or you know, it's like your you when you do one of your stand-up gigs. It's exactly the same, isn't it? Black support was doubled from 2016 to 2018. So from 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 four all the way up to nearly eight. Something like four percent. To about 9%. 4% to 9%. Right, well, that's that's more than double. But, again, obviously, can't expect Dave to even get that right. But, um, yeah, not exactly significant. I don't even know if it's true. Probably not, but I'm not looking it up. He hasn't, so why the fuck should I? Now, that's not huge. I get it. It's not huge. But if something doubles, and doubles and doubles and doubles, well, now we got some scaling. Right? Yes, Dave. Yes, Dave. If something doubles, you know repeatedly over a course of time yeah that that is that is it but something doubling once it's not wait does not something just because something doubles over does not precipitate that it's going what so next year he'd have 18 percent but then he'd have 36 then before you know it he'd have he'd have 124 percent black people we'd have to get black people from the future to come in Ghosts of black people would be supporting Donald Trump. Yes. Why is it that not one country, somewhere perhaps in Africa, that didn't have the technology or the wherewithal or the information to deal with this thing properly, why did not one country fail? Why didn't we find one city that was completely infected and everyone died? All of this stuff. Like, I'm just asking questions here, okay? Have you looked up the answers? Have you? You know, you're a journalist, Dave. Your job... I say journalist, obviously, it's doing a lot of heavy lifting. Your job is not just to ask questions. Your job is also to find fucking answers. You can't just sit here and say something. Hey, there, it, COVID just wouldn't exist in a certain respect if I was running the world. Because people... Because everybody would be dead. There's risk in life. That's it. That, that, that's just it. There's risk in life. I'm glad you weren't around in the 80s. As a gay man, that would have been particularly fucking bad for you. Lockdowns, because lockdowns, in their minds, further prove that capitalism doesn't work, right? And then we're going to have to give people UBI. We can't send them to work, and they don't like their jobs in the first place, and you don't pay them enough. And now they're all stuck at home because there's a scary disease outside, so let's give them all universal basic income, and they'll have just enough to survive and everything else. It's like they're hacking away at everything. Do we have I mean... You know when you hear something and you're just like, do I need, if you need that, if you need me to explain, well, no one want, Dave, understand this, no one wanted a lockdown, no one wanted, no one wanted any of this, but you know what also 
Dave, and I'll speak this from personal experience, and I don't care whether someone wants to accuse me of, you know, being emotionally manipulative or taking personal... I don't care. Do you know what I would have wanted, Dave? You know, there would be at least eight people I know who wouldn't be dead now. And that matters to me. Cunt. Have to freaking build walls around states? I don't know. Yeah. Do we have to have national guards that are going to protect states, like, from other states? I mean, these are crazy things and not things Again, I'm just asking questions. That are fun to think about. No. Should we take Dave... Ru should Dave Rubin be forced to have a fucking napalm enema? I'm just asking questions. Now, now, this bit here, this is... Now, I know we like to, it's easy to make fun of Dave Rubin, and I know a lot of people do it, and I don't, and I know people can say that, oh, it's like, I don't care, right? It's always been a bit fun. It's always been, you know, it's always been nice to slap him around, because he really is, you know, he really is a, just a useless, vapid, you know, completely, there's nothing, there is nothing there. He's not even... You know, he's not even vaguely charismatic with it. You know, he doesn't. He's not even charming or interesting. You know, there's, there's he's he's completely useless. But this clip here is is where it goes from. Is where it goes. It's almost. It's like it almost stops being funny at this point. And and you just wonder whether it's like it's just worth you know. You know, should should you need to deal with someone this this fucking insidious? Did you catch the end there? There's a plan to get them the education and the resources they need. Sort of like a re-education camp? No, Dave, no. Not like a re-education. To get people the education and the resources... They mean that means getting them the educate the information, not like a re-education camp. Should we maybe put them in gulags or in special areas? There's a subtle. I don't know if you can see what he's doing here, folks. There's a very subtle, you know, analogy that Dave is drawing on here from them talking about sending resources and making sure people are educated on a certain issue. To him, now they're being thrown into gulags. Move them from society where we can then teach them what is good and right. Where they Don't we sort of teach people what's good and right all the time? I mean, isn't that your job, Dave? Have to bow to the state and get injected despite whatever legitimate... Bearing in, mind, they bearing in mind when Dave was questioned recently on his show and asked whether or not he had been vaccinated, he refused to answer the question saying it was nobody's business. Well, I'm sorry... It is. If you choose to make it, if you choose to come out and say that and try to promote people, promote the idea that it's bad and wrong and people shouldn't do it, then that you damn right. We have a right to know. And so do the people you I think the more more so than anyone else, the people who you are convincing, you know, not to get this vaccine, you owe them the fucking right to answer. And the fact that you didn't suggests to me it's quite obvious that you frigging have. Right. Because you're a fucking, you're a gutless, spineless little worm. It may have. Uh, would that be good? Maybe. Maybe there would be these camps that we could build and they would think that they were walking into a shower to be quiet. You're right, Dave. Let's exterminate the people who are, who are, who are the most at risk from a disease that mostly, and the most pe Fucking hell. This is a guy, this is a guy who, bear in mind, let's not forget, Dave Rubin is, is Jewish. And he pulls the I'm a Jew card any single time anyone likes to call him out on anything. I remember many years ago, um, I don't know if it was Mother Jones or Jacobin or whatever, uh, but they, someone did an article and they alluded, they talked about the rise of right-wing or alt-right YouTubers and they listed a load of people and one of them was Dave Rubin and he went off and had a bloody hissy fit about the fact that he, that he, they would refer to him as alt-right and Dave, who doesn't like identity politics, then went on to talk about how he was Jewish and his ancestors fought against, you know, um, and faced oppression by the Nazis and here he is, here, here that same man is, making a holocaust analogy about vaccines right here he is exploiting right 
Here he is, exploited. And what, what would your what would your ancestors, Dave, who you were glad, who you're glad to, you know, who previously you're happy to use as a shield to protect you from criticism? But how would they feel? Do you think if they saw you now? Do you think maybe they'd be like, it ain't fucking worth it? But there would be gas. Would that be? Would that be all right? No, Dave. It wouldn't be all right. And nobody. How the fucking hell can you? Bugger this up so bad. How is it possible for you? How can anybody sit there and take from someone talking about education and resources to you? Let's gas the fuckers. You see what these people are doing? No, no, I don't. I see what you're doing. You're about as subtle as fucking, you know, Mount Pilatumu is an unripened zit. Compared to you, in terms of subtlety, the killing fields of Cambodia was a bouncy castle compared to your ability to make a fucking coherent analogy. You see what these people are doing? If you think what I just said there is a little over the top, right? N no, it's not a little over the top, Dave. It is beyond the... It is over the line to a degree... It's, it's just... Go it's gone. It's fucking gone. Right? It's not even... You know, there ain't even a... It's not even jumping the shark. You've jumped the jumping of... There are, there's Fonzie jumping a shark, and here's you somewhere else in the stratosphere. It is like a little bit much. Look at what has happened in the last year and a half. How far we have fallen. Okay, so when I say that, I don't think tomorrow she's gassing police officers. No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you think she's doing it tomorrow or whether you think it's happening in a few years from now. It's the same thing. But I don't think that it actually would be too far away. When you take a certain segment of society and say they are the disease and they might kill you, what do you think the people in power would do to them? Look at history. That is exactly what these people would do. Do, do you know what, Dave? I hope one day you fall over, get your head jammed into a fence in a field, and then over the course of the next 18 hours, you get your ass destroyed by a shire horse. That's what I hope happens to you. Anyway, Dick Coughlin, uh, Brother Neuro, thanks very much for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe, support on Patreon. Good night. May God be less, and where there's no sense, there's no feeling.